Hello dear ones, it's Alice. I am of the stars. I have for you today episode 4.7 in the video series Satan's Powers and What to Do About Them by Alice B. Claggett. This episode 4.7 is entitled Prince of Devils and here is the commentary. There is a reference to Satan as Prince of Devils in Matthew 12, verse 24, the King James Version of the Bible, which is public domain. Um, that verse calls Beelzebub, which is another name for Satan, the Prince of Devils. Verse 24 goes like this, But when the Pharisees heard it, they said, this fellow doth not cast out devils, but by Beelzebub, the prince of devils. This was a situation in which the Pharisees saw a miracle of casting out a devil by Christ and accused Christ of colluding with Satan in order to accomplish that miracle. Christ replied that that didn't make good sense because Satan would not work against himself and in that way weaken his kingdom or his house. So um, that was sure proof that to cast out devils is not the work of Satan. But that's a story for another day to get back to the text. Here's my commentary. It seems to me that so as to create for us the illusion of duality. God has arranged for each of us to be tethered to a devil at birth. Not the most pleasant notion, but not all that pleasant for the devils either, I might imagine. Because as our light quotient increases, because we are paying attention to the angel that also stands by our side, our personal devil becomes more and more frenetically insistent at presenting us with dark alternatives. And I am guessing there comes a point in our evolution of brightness when our unwanted tethered companion just goes poof. Though I am for preserving endangered species, I do not feel at all bad about this. They may not like it. They may fear it greatly. But each and every poofy is just returning to its highest truth, to source, to God. They do not know it now, but they are going to like it a lot when it finally happens, I feel. It is all in the hands of God. God knows exactly how it all should happen. In more recent years from the time that I wrote this commentary, I began to consider the possibility that what we encounter as a devil uh, tethered to us on earth is really better considered to be the shadow of the personality. Um, and that's a separate topic. It's, it's useful for those that, that are concerned about the idea of devils being around. It's, it, for, for many people, it's better to consider that it's just a darkness in our own personality that we're clearing up, the shadow of the personality. If you'd like to read a little more about that topic, you can go to my blog, Awakening with Planet Earth, https colon slash slash awakeningwithplanetearth.com and look up the term shadow of the personality. And you'll find some discussion of that there. I have for you an image by Gustave Doré, one of the great artists that I remember from my childhood. The title of the image is Satan in Council. It's in the public domain as is all of Gustave Doré's work because 
It was done in the 1800s, this one in the 1868. You will see here Satan at the top here, looking bright. I call this the seeming light that he might get from other beings, such as human beings, whose light he is devouring. So he may seem very light and very splendid, very grand to us because of that vampirical quality I feel he has. Here you see all of his minions here. He has an army of minions out to do his bidding according to the Bible and according to Gustave Doré. It's a, it's a splendid scene, is it not? It looks like he's a pretty powerful guy. It looks like he's pretty grand and like that. If you were to encounter him in the astral plane, he might look like that. He might seem very grand. Well, I have some thoughts for you about devils, what some people feel, and which may or may not be true, I have to tell you, because devils exist, as I've mentioned before, only in a very limited reality. The physical realm, which they influence through mind control, I feel, and the astral realm, which is really where they are when they influence us, influence our dreams, influence our thoughts, influence our nightmares. And the things I have to tell you right now have to do with those types of nightmare realities that devils can create from time to time, which can cause some concern if we don't have strong faith in God, a cross to wear, a Bible to carry, and and a chance to pray, you know. So, so don't take these things too seriously, okay? They're just inventions of the of the world of devils to try and put fear into us when we could have faith instead. The commentary goes like this. Devils can talk to each other and we can hear our own devil chatting to the devils of our friends whether or not they are nearby physically. It may sound like us talking to our friends as devils take on in an exaggerated sense the soul qualities of the humans to which they are tethered. Devils can also swoop through our mental field in the head area, creating a discombobulating feeling like an elliptical energy a little smaller than a basketball. This temporarily disturbs our thinking and can be upsetting if we have the mental construct that we are our minds. But it cannot bother a person whose awareness is placed in his heart. Devils, they say, can crawl in through a body orifice. That's an opening. Once inside, they can crawl around making spooky little comments, or so it's said. This can be upsetting if we have the mental construct that we are our bodies. Extremely spooky, I have to admit, especially if it, the notion occurs while we're sleeping or dreaming. It's important, I feel, to realize that the intention of devils, their raison d'etre, is to create darkness in us and not to kill us. So this ploy of theirs is an attempt to create fear. It is fear that is our enemy in life on earth. Not devils, but fear. Fear within our own hearts is the thing that we must overcome with the courage that God gives us, I feel. I have for you a an image that's a portion of a painting called Medicine by Gustav Klimt. It was painted between 1900 and 1907 and I found it in Wikimedia Commons so it's in the public domain. It looks like this. You see a woman 
rather august, looking aloof, and a red garb marked with gold ornaments. You also see a, what looks a little like a snake twining around through the picture. And to me, this image represented not so much medicine or healing as some fake uh, thing that appears to be healing, but is in fact more like um, something bad for us, causing illness, uh, a pretend healing, but not really so. That's just how this image struck me because of the coldness of the face of the woman and what looked like a snake here and the redness here just seems like a gory picture to me, not a healing picture. I might be very wrong about it. Here are the comments on the image. This reminds me of a nightmare I once had of an astral snake that got into a woman through her mouth. That's an orifice, what they say. And then spent an unconscionable amount of time crawling around inside her astral form, very delighted that it was frightening her. I recall how helpless I felt that I could not help that woman escape from this bugaboo. I felt I was in a twilight state of consciousness between waking and sleeping and could not quite wake up out of concern for that woman. What a nightmare, huh? It seemed to me she was lying at the end of a long bed on which I was also reclining, that somehow her bed was part of my own. She was very pretty, and she was huddled on her side, crying inconsolably. I recall a state she was in had to do with her husband leaving her and enjoining a curse against her that she should have no male friend but him until they were together again. It was a spook out for me, for sure. I was very relieved when the nightmare ended. I recall that very clearly. Well, you can tell I'm a little up in the air about devils because I have come up in my blog, Awakening with Planet Earth, with another interpretation regarding this kind of nightmare. I thought that maybe what I took to be devils were really nature spirits that had been mind controlled and darkened a little or distorted a little in their typical and energy of goodness and kindness and sweetness by black magic. At the time when I was writing this quite some years ago, it seemed that might be the case. But these days it seems like that's not happening anymore. Things are changing so fast on ascending earth, especially with regard to negative astral entities that used to be very numerous here on Earth. It's hard to tell from day to day where we really stand anymore. And of course a lot depends on the timeline and dimension in which you are perceiving the shift on Earth. Which is why I always say, ask your Ascension team that's here for you to help you with your earthly soul lesson. Ask them to optimize your timelines and dimensions for the all through free will so that yours will be the best temporospatial experience that you may have during the ascension process. Here's a commentary to do with what to do if you have a dream like the one I discussed just above. An excellent solution, I feel, is to call on your Ascension team. You can use that request that I just told you. Um, spirit to team, optimize timelines and dimensions for the all through free will. And that will probably help. Or if you prefer, you can speak with your higher self. 
ask your team, your ascension team, or your higher self to dispose of the interloper. That would be that strange, snaky being in the dream. In the manner that is best for all, all beings everywhere. Then thank your ascension team or your higher self for helping you. Gratitude is very important in this instance. Not only does it dispel fear, but also it aligns your grounded self with the highest, with your vertical energetic influences rather than your horizontal energetic influences. By vertical energetic influences, I mean your central vertical power current, the kundalini, the vertical center of your energy field here on earth, and those beings at higher and higher dimensions within your energy field, known as your ascension team, who can help you. By horizontal energetic influences, I mean what we perceive in the physical or astral realm here on earth as being other than ourselves, other people, other beings, other astral beings, whether positive or negative. These beings are all in dimensions far less light, far less happy than most of the beings in our ascension team. To go on with the commentary some years ago, I had the notion that there are freelance devils, not tethered to humans, but other types of devils that are freelance roaming about Earth. And that these untethered freelance devils disappeared from Earth a while back. In my own temporospatial context, in my own optimum timeline and dimension, they disappeared a long time ago. I have uh, an article for you in my blog, Awakening with Planet Earth, that might be of help. The title of the article is Bidding Our Demons Goodbye video series by Alice B. Claggett. And you could find it on Awakening with Planet Earth, https colon slash slash awakeningwithplanetearth.com. I have a subsection for you here that offers one way to deal with scary dreams like the one that I described. It's called uncoloring. You may recall that I spoke about a scary dream with a really spooky kind of snaky being that was frightening a woman. Not me, but another woman. And uh, then I said that it might be a nature spirit. And priorly I spoke of Satan himself and how he might be considered to be the shadow of our personality. These two instances of taking a scary concept, something that frightens us, and changing it to something less frightening are instances of the process called uncoloring. That process is described by Swami J, otherwise known as Swami Jnaneshvara Bharati, who wrote a blog entitled Uncoloring Your Colored Thoughts Through Yoga. You can find that blog online at Swami J's website, which is https colon slash slash swamij dot com. It's a great website with many references and it explains Patanjali's teachings on how to know God. I think you'll like it quite a bit and find quite a bit there that will be helpful to you, especially in dealing with these frightening concepts such as Satan and devils and nature spirits that have been bewitched by black magic, things like that. 
thinks it costs us nightmares. To continue with the commentary, another way to shift from a scary scenario to a copacetic one is to utilize my timeline and dimensional optimization techniques. I've already told you a little about that in this video, but you can also go to my blog, awakeningwithplanetearth.com, https colon slash slash awakeningwithplanetearth.com, and there you can search for my blog categories, timeline optimization, and dimensional optimization. The astrogeophysics um, discoveries that I made in years past and of which timeline optimization and dimensional optimization are examples are one of my most important contributions to the ascension literature. So if you can get a chance to get your feet wet on this topic of astrogeophysics, I, I think it will be well worth it for you. You'll discover something new. You'll be the intrepid explorer in a, a, a whole new world, I feel. So, timeline optimization and dimensional optimization at my blog, Awakening with Planet Earth. To continue with the commentary, note that this blog was originally written during a time when many solar events were about to unfold on Earth. As I recall, soon thereafter there were two X-class solar flares and maybe six M-class flares. These types of solar events can cause mystical experience and also nightmares such as that that I've described. For more on that time when the blog was first written, you can go to the article, Sun Continues to Emit Solar Flares. That's the title. By NASA, 28 October 2013. At https colon slash slash www.nasa.gov. To continue with the commentary, when the magnetosphere of Earth is dynamic, as in times of Earth-directed X-flares, the electromagnetic flux in the atmosphere around us can cause changes in processing of our visual input. These changes are interpreted by psychiatrists and psychologists as hallucinations, and by saints and sages as mystical visions. Because of the common ground of the visions people of greatly varied religious traditions experience during X-flares, I tend to agree more with mystics than with Western science on this important issue. I feel the visions we have during Earth-directed X-flares, whether of Christed beings... <laughs> it's okay, it's a scrub blue jay, all is well. <laughs> whether of Christed beings such as angels and beings of light, or of non-Christed beings such as Satan, demons and devils allow us rare glimpses of timelines and dimensions beyond our awareness timeline and dimension. For more on this, see the article, Do Geostorms Cause Sensations of Pain and Visual Hallucinations in Human Beings? by Alice B. Claggett. It's on my website, awakeningwithplanetearth.com. I see that pesky scrub jay is behaving himself right now. So I'll take this opportunity to say goodbye for today. 
This is the end of the episode. 4.7, Prince of Devils. May God bless you and keep you safe and be with you through all your days.